The objective here is to teach people how to use the Fender sound system. Got it here in its kind of buttoned up mobile configuration, completely encased. The speakers join the amp in the mixing board and therefore uh, provide a very hard protective case on the outside. When you get ready to take it apart, it's just you, you pop these buckles, they then release completely, and then you kind of wiggle it to get the speakers loose. There are these grooved feet that kind of fit into some slots there. And these are your individual speakers that you then set up on your speaker stands. To begin with, here in the back, there is a trap door. You lift up, open it up, and inside, so you typically have two speaker wires, one microphone, and one microphone cable, as well as the power cord. And I plug the power cord into the back of the system. Then everything else that I need to know is in the front. The first thing you do is make sure the power is off, and then you connect in your components. Typical convention is to try to connect your microphones into the first few channels and then your instruments into the later channels. I connected up a microphone and uh, a guitar. So I've got an iPod here with uh, RCA jacks. And I'm going to connect that into the stereo inputs. And finally I connect up my speaker wire. So there are several main sections on this mixing board. There's the place for the electronics to plug into for both the inputs and outputs. Many times many sound boards will have the output on the back side but this particular system has it on the uh, up here on the front. This whole section is for controlling the individual channels. This is channels 1, 2, 3, and 4. So this area here controls this input. Channel 1 input is controlled by this whole strip here. Channel 2's input is controlled by this strip here. Channel 3's input and Channel 4's input. And then this separate section is for these two stereo channels. This is where the master volumes are. So this controls all the level of all the channels up and down. So that's kind of an overview of how the board works. Now let's talk about the individual components. Okay, first I focused in on the input channel plugs. There's not a lot to say here, just that there are two forms of inputs you can provide into an input plug but you want to use either one or the other. You do not want to plug two plugs at the same time into each of the inputs. This is called a mixer because it takes signals from each of the individual channels and it blends them together according to how you wish them to be blended. This is a relatively simple board. This set of knobs over here for channels 1, 2, 3, and 4 are, are the master volumes. If you got a microphone plugged into channel 1 and you want that microphone to be louder, you can just increase its level and that raises the relative level of the microphone its volume compared to these other channels. If the guitar is on channel 2, you, you what you're trying to do here is get the correct blend of microphone to voice. You don't want the microphone to be so loud that you can't hear the guitar and you don't want the guitar to be so loud that you can't hear the vocals. So on any one channel in addition to the volume that you can control for the, that's coming out of that channel, you can also control a, a few other things on this simple board. Uh, notice that these four channels all have the same knobs except for this one special knob and I'll talk about it at the end. This next set of knobs are the EQ. That's just an equalizer. So if you have it up in the neutral 12 o'clock position, which is where you typically would start all of your channels to be straight up in the EQ area, you're equally balancing equal, uh, your highs and your lows. If you got it all the way over here in the red, you're, you're kind of muting the highs and you're amplifying the bass. But perhaps sometimes you can't hear someone very well. Maybe they have a very deep and rumbly voice and what you want to do is is mute the bass and increase their the highs that are in their voice to bring in clarity. And so that's what the EQ is for is to make the, that particular channel sound better. So anything I do to any of these knobs I'm only doing to that one channel. In this case I'm, I've got channel 1 connected to a microphone and you may wish to play with that during practice sessions and even during live performances you might gently give that a nudge and see if you can get better quality sound by messing with the EQ but almost always you want to start with it in the 12 o'clock or neutral position that's called a reverb typically you add reverb to microphones and what that can do is that can take the sharpness off of some people's voices 
Typically you do not add reverb to any instruments. And finally, this uh, last pan, and what that does is it shifts the voice to either the left or to the right channel. Typically pan is also set up to 12. So typical settings are equalizer straight up, reverb down to nothing, or maybe a little bit of reverb, pan up at 12 so it's in the neutral position. The last knob I want to talk about here is called the VIP. The idea that when someone is speaking over a, over a microphone, you've got microphone in channel one, it will automatically cut down on the sound of the music that's playing in the background. It doesn't require a sound person to be standing there at the board to cut down the music when someone walks up to the microphone and says something. I know of no event that we use our system that where we want that to be active. So this knob always needs to be down to zero. This next section, control of the stereo, the stereo channels. So if you think of these as channels one, two, three, and four, the mono channels that are up top, this is channel five and channel six, which are stereo channels. Similar to the channels that we talked about up above, this is the master volume for those two channels. The only difference really between what was up top and these is that they've broken the EQ into two different levels. There's an EQ low and an EQ high for the top four channels. This EQ knob controlled high and low. Typically you would start with these all in the neutral position, means, meaning that the, the indicator is pointing to 12 o'clock. In many of our rooms they're loud and they're echoey and so typically adding some highs and reducing the lows uh, will help with clarity. Reverb, typically you do not want to add reverb to something like an iPod. And then pan, as before, we don't really want the sound coming stronger out of the left or the right. This section on the fender is the master volume area. You blended or controlled the relative volumes of the individual channels up above and now this is going to control the final volume that comes out of the whole sound system. An extremely important button is this black button that many people do not understand. You can see that this button can either go up or down. When it is up, in the up position, it kind of points to this line which wraps around these two knobs which say that these two knobs are controlling the volume out of the left and the right outputs. Well, if we look down below, we've got a speaker plugged into the left, a speaker plugged into the right. Then when I control these individual knobs up here, they're controlling the volume out of the left and the right. When this switch is down, it's kind of an indicator that this line down here is the one that we should be paying attention to. In that case, this big knob here is controlling the, the main speakers, and this volume here is controlling what we call the monitor speakers. So this system has the ability to connect up four speakers, not just two. So the way we would do that is the connections down here at the bottom can be connected in two different ways. We, in this case, we've only connected two speakers, a left and a right. But if we want, we can have the left and right speakers that are pointed to the audience to be into these two plugs. And if you look down here, this says the word main. So this big knob up here is controlling the volume of both speakers, the left and the right, because I've now taken the left and right speaker wires and plugged them into this thing called main, and this button up here is now down in this mode where this but big dial controls the volume coming out of these two holes here. I could have two additional speaker wires coming out of this, these two holes, and that's called the monitor. I could have this knob controlling the monitor speakers while this one is controlling what the people in the room are hearing. So be very aware of and careful of where this button is set and then where these plugs go. And finally the last piece of information on this main set is that in addition to controlling channel by channel you can also control the uh, reverb that's coming out of the entire blend or complete blend of the sound or the EQ. So again, I would start off with this at neutral, pointed straight up. I would take all the reverb out of the system. Let me just show you again how they work. So I've got the master volume up. I've got the, I've got the button pushed up so that this controls the left and right speakers. So the master volume is up, but the volume on all my individual channels are down. So even though I speak into the mic, you don't hear anything. 
if I wish to increase the level of vocals that you hear from the mic, which connected in channel one, I can increase the volume. And you hear that my voice is kind of bassy, so if I were to take the EQ all the way over, you know, it kind of becomes tinny sounding. And if I go all the way over to here, it becomes very boomy and bassy sounding. So you can see what the EQ does. So be sure to play with that. Do not be afraid of these knobs. You need to adjust them to get your vocals and your your guitars and everything sounding like you want them to sound. Here's what reverb sounds like. Let me add a little reverb here. So you can see that it kind of adds an echo. So typically you do want to add a little reverb to the individual vocals for people to soften it up. And I'm going to turn on a soundtrack. Uh, that's, that's the input that's going through here, but again we don't hear it because I don't have the volume up on it on that individual channel yet. There, I, I just turned it up a little bit, and you can hear my voice and the music at the same time. And so what this is doing, the mixing board's job is to get the relative volume as you would like for it to be. So I'm increasing my own mic over the music, or you know, if I, if I don't want so much vocal, I can increase the music over my voice. So that's the job of the mic, of the mixing board, is to blend those sounds like you think they sound good. So let me just show you here what this VIP button does. I've turned it all the way over to one side. And if someone walks up to the microphone and begins using the microphone, you hear that, that uh, music dies down. But as soon as I stop talking, it comes back. 